Are you tired of slow 3D prints? What if we could just make them faster instantly? So today I'm gonna show you how to speed up your 3D prints without sacrificing quality. So you can get more prints done in less time. With these tips, you can often cut your print time in half, getting twice as many parts out of the same machine. Sounds pretty awesome, right? And all you need are some really simple adjustments, most of which you can just do in your slicer without changing anything else. Honestly, I'm pretty mad that I didn't know these tips sooner because it could have saved me a lot of time and filament on all of my projects. So stick around because watching this video for a couple of minutes could save you hours of print time. To have a good comparison, we need a benchmark model where we can see the print times before and after all of our adjustments. I really like this Gridfinity holder for a tape measure because I print stuff like this all the time. All of my testing will be done on my Bamboo Lab X1C, which is already a pretty fast printer, but we can still get a lot of improvement. So let's first print this at standard settings when I change nothing and see how long it takes. The first print came out looking amazing and it took one hour and three minutes to print. So now let's see how far we can get that time down. Here are four things that you can do to make print times faster. The first thing that I'd usually do is reduce the infill. The normal setting is 15% and you can easily drop that down to 10. And the bigger your model is, the more impact this really has on print time. So just this little adjustment already saves us like seven minutes, which is pretty nice actually. If your prints don't need to be super rigid or something like this that I'm making, you don't really need all the strength and it's perfectly possible. One thing that you should also know is that a lot of the strength of the part actually depends on the shell thickness really more than the infill. So if you need something to be stronger, maybe add one extra wall, but don't pump in a lot of infill. Theoretically, you could even drop it down to 0% and still have fairly sturdy parts. The problem is that you need infill to be able to print because you need something to put your top layers on. And that's where the next tip comes in because you could use a different infill pattern. For example, one that I pretty much ignored till now is the lightning infill pattern. And it's kind of weird. It doesn't really give you any extra strength, but what it does is it is able to support the top layers with as little filament and as little printing time from that as possible. So here on the sparse info pattern, you go all the way down and you see lightning. And if we slice that, you can see that it looks pretty weird because it, there's really not much in there. One thing that I wanted to say at this point that infill percentage is a little bit of a weird measure because you would obviously think if you put something with grid infill and put it, make it 15% infill, that the end product is gonna have the same weight as something where you do the same amount of infill percentage with whatever, lightning infill. But in fact, that's totally not true. You will have very, very different weights. I think when I did the same with lightning infill as opposed to grid, it was one was 30 grams and the other one was 40 grams of weight. So it's a really big difference. One last thing that I wanna mention with infill especially is modifiers. With modifiers, you can have different settings in different regions of the part. So for example, if I'm like, oh yeah, this is the bottom, I want this to be stronger. I can just go on the part, right click and add a modifier. For example, let's take this cube and then we put that right in there. That cube you can now scale down to what you need it to be. So now this cube only covers the bottom. So now we can change the settings only in the area where the cube intersects with our model. And if I wanted to say, hey, let's print the base a little sturdier or for whatever reason, then I could just go in here and be like, okay, let's make this 30% infill density right there. And it's only gonna be there after that then it's gonna go back to the normal 10-15% that we talked about before. With this model, I don't think modifiers are needed. Whenever I print something or wanna print something, I ask myself, how much time should I really spend optimizing this in the slicer? Because I think, you know, you gotta make sure that it actually makes sense. If you print something that doesn't take that much time, don't spend a big amount of time optimizing it. Just do the basics and make it faster, but don't overdo it. Whereas when you print something that takes like, whatever, 20 hours, obviously it makes sense to spend more time optimizing it, doing it really well, because it will save you hours and hours, whereas with a small model, it might save you minutes and it just doesn't make sense. Always keep in mind, how much do I really need to optimize it? Where's the sweet spot between my own work that maybe 
You know, I care more about than the printer printing like 10 minutes longer, which doesn't really matter that much. Just wrapping up with the whole part about infill, we're now down to 10% infill because this does not need a lot of strength. And I went to lightning infill because it saves a lot of filament and time. And with all of these changes, we're already down to 48 minutes. So we've saved a good 15 minutes just with this one thing, which is pretty good, I think. I want to give a quick shout out to Bamboo Lab for giving me this printer for this video. Honestly, it's been making this video hard because it's already so fast that it's hard to optimize that. With slower printers, it's even easier to get a lot faster and shave off a lot of time. But for me, this thing has been a dream. It's working so well. I've gotten great results of it. I can only recommend this one. So yeah, while it's making life hard for me, getting the prints even faster, it's a printer I can only recommend. So check out the link in the description down below. So the next thing that we're gonna change is the layer height right here. The standard is 0.2 millimeters and we're gonna bump this up to 0.28 millimeters. And this gives us a lot of speed because vertical printing takes a lot of time. So just this change brings us down to 45 minutes now, which is pretty nice. This setting is a little bit tricky because I think it really depends on the kind of parts you're printing. With this Gridfinity thing, which is fairly flat and pretty much everything, it's no problem at all. But if you're having rounded things, then you're running into problems pretty quickly because it can lead to staircasing if you have like higher layer heights. And this is something where you really gotta see are you trying to get the best quality or the fastest print? If you have a model that has areas with like a lot of detail and then other areas that are fairly standard, you should definitely think about doing adaptive layer height. So that really looks at the model and where the detail is. And then if there's little detail, it prints bigger layers, saving you time. And then where the detail is, it does small layers, giving you more detail. So here you're kind of getting the best of both worlds, which definitely makes a lot of sense if that's something that applies to your model. I think in this case, because we don't have a lot of detail, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to really do it, but it's something you should consider with your printing. So the next adjustment that I do in this case is try to play with the line width. Here it is 0.4 millimeters, which is more or less the nozzle size, but you can even go a little bit wider, like 0.6. And if you do something like that, you already put down a lot more width per each pass that you're doing with the print head. Currently, this isn't really saving us any time because you're just printing a thicker wall and nothing else. But it gets really interesting at the point where you can then reduce the wall count. Because for example, before we had 0.4 millimeter and two of them would be 0.8. And now we're printing 0.6 millimeter with one. So you could even consider going from two wall loops to one where this does work now. The thing with this adjustment is you have to really look out not to overdo it because you can run into things where your print gets less clean because you're pushing the limits of your printer. The last tip that really applies to models like this is getting a bigger nozzle. So maybe going from 0.4 millimeters to 0.6 or even 0.8. And the nice thing here is you're putting it down a lot more filament per each pass, also making you faster, of course. I, for example, now have a 0.8 millimeter nozzle for my printer which is super nice, especially for something like a Gridfinity like this. And with a big nozzle, you get a lot of benefits because now the line width is already 0.8, so double off the 0.4 that we had before. So we can easily go into the strength menu and then put the wall loops from two to one because that's actually the same now and you don't need more than that. And that actually does save a lot of printing time. The interesting thing is that with a large nozzle, some other tips don't really apply as much. So for example, going from the 0.4 millimeter layer height to the higher 0.56 one actually does make the print slower, which is weird, but I'm assuming that we're kind of off the edges of the amount of filament that the printer can push here, and that leads to it being slower here. The thing is, always check if your changes actually do what you want and go in the right direction. So with all of the changes that I did here, we've brought our print time from one hour three before to now around 33 minutes, which is really good. So with all of these changes, I'm now gonna throw the model on the printer and we'll see how it comes out. All right, it's the next day and here we have the final print. And I think the result is pretty solid. I can definitely see that it has some rough edges here and there, but it's still a pretty working print. You know, this is sturdy and everything. 
Personally, I think this is a great example that here you're making trade-offs between speed and quality. This is definitely a little bit on the rougher side, but still perfectly usable, as I said. I've made ones that have come out really bad, and you know, this is where you can make big time savings. Especially with a bigger layer width and big nozzles on intricate parts, you're starting to get pretty rough prints. So in the end, you have to know where do I make the sacrifices? You know, do I go a little bit slower and have a perfect looking print? Or am I fine with this, which is still, you know, definitely working well, but it's looking a little bit rough. And this is where you need to do a little bit trial and error and get to work out what you actually want for the best result for you. So all in all, I really hope this video helps you make your prints go faster. And if you're looking which to do it first, I do it in the sequence that I showed in this video because dropping down the infill and also using lightning infill will likely keep the quality of your prints really well for a long time. And after that, you're starting to degrade a little bit and the quality you're getting. And if this was interesting to you and you're interested in speeding up your printing, another thing that I do is automate my printer so it would print without me and just keep cycling through prints, pushing them off by itself, which was huge while printing my Gridfinity system and is a super interesting experiment. So go watch that and I'll see you in the next one.